Hey, 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 let's go easy today. We're gonna to talk about the oxygen dissociation curve. Now what this curve does is it uh, graphs on the y-axis the saturation of uh, hemoglobin particles at certain partial pressures of oxygen, okay? And so usually we set this to zero to 100, even though the partial pressure of oxygen can be higher than 100. Um, and what this is saying is, hey, at a certain partial pressure, so at 25, at 50, at 75, what amount of hemoglobin will be bound to an oxygen uh, molecule? And the reason why this is such a thing is because hemoglobin molecules and heme particles inside of uh, hemoglobin red blood cells undergo a conformational change when they bind uh, to oxygen and when they're found in certain environments. And so what you get is you get this sigmoidal looking graph here. And this is zero to 100%. And so this was essentially be 100% of heme particles are bound to oxygen whereas 0%. Um, so you can see here, and this, let's say this is the average person. At 100 partial pressure oxygen, so 100 millimeters of mercury partial pressure oxygen, 100% or thereabouts um, of your hemoglobin molecules are gonna be saturated and attached to oxygen. Um, now we can uh, modify this environment a little bit, and this is where it gets clinically important. And so, if the tissues are, are a different type of environment, it'll cause either unloading or decreased uh, unloading um, of the hemoglobin molecules. And what that means is you can get these different looking curves. This thing is called a right shift. And what this means is you can already tell that at a certain partial pressure of oxygen, let's say 100, less hemoglobin is gonna be bound, which means there's more unloading. For some reason, the hemoglobin particles, or the hemoglobin, uh, the heme particles say, hey, we gotta unload more of our oxygen, these tissues need it. You can also get, uh, on the other side, a left shift. So this would be a right shift over here, and this would be a left shift. And for whatever reason, this means that the heme particles wanna hold on to their oxygen more. So you can see it only takes a partial pressure of 75 millimeters of mercury of oxygen to get 100% saturation. Now what causes this conformational change or these shifts to the right or to the left? And that is by the environment in the tissues. Now um, the way to remember this, and this is the mnemonic, I'm sure this is why you're here, is um, what, how can you remember what causes a right shift? What causes the release? And so the way I remember that is that R equals right shift equals release of O2, right? And so this is an environment that needs more oxygen. So we're having this right shift in our oxygen dissociation curve because something's going on in that tissue that's causing the hemoglobin to offload or to unload its oxygen or to release its oxygen. Right shift, R, release, right shift. Okay, what's gonna cause this is the easy way to remember this is think of a muscle that works out, okay? It's gonna be hotter, it's gonna have more carbon dioxide, it's gonna have more acid products, okay? So a right shift equals muscle working out. And so you're gonna have a higher partial pressure of CO2, you're gonna have higher acid, and this gets tricky because it's actually a lower pH, a lot of people get messed up with that. A lower pH is more acidic, which means more H protons uh, concentration, etc. Um, a higher temp, right? Muscles that work out get hotter. And a higher DPG or BPG, which uh, a lot of people get uh, uh, tripped up on, but just think of it as an acid, okay? So if we're shifting to the right, it's because of a muscle's working out. So it's hot, it's got carbon dioxide, and it's acidic or it has a low pH. The left shift is exactly the opposite. So the left shift means, for whatever reason, hemoglobin is passing through the bloodstream at this you know, end organ or what have you, and it wants to hold on to the product, holds on to the O2. And what could that see? That could see a muscle that's quiet or not working out. So not working out. And that's gonna be things like um, a decreased amount of acid or an increased pH. Increased pH is more uh, basic. You're gonna see a decreased temperature will cause 
uh, a left shift or decreased offloading. And then um, lastly, you'll see a decreased amount of uh, CO2. So um, for example, the question could be like, a patient is hypothermic, what kind of shift will that cause your oxygen dissociation curve, or what will that do? And that shift will be to the left because you're not releasing to the right, you're holding on to more, you're at decreased temperature, etc. Okay? That's the oxygen dissociation curve. You're comparing what's going to happen to the saturation of heme particles at certain partial pressures of oxygen, depending on the environment that is being caused by the body. R, right, release of O2 because the muscle's working out, needs it. All right, thank you.